Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of ratios and rates. This is standard 6.4b in the great state of Texas, and we are using item number 29 off the 2017 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So you might think I forgot to put something on the screen, but this is the entire problem. In Austin, Texas, 8 bats, 840 grams of insects in one night. At this rate, how many grams of insects could 64 bats eat at, in one night? This is a free response item, so we don't have A, B, C, or D to choose from. We're going to have to create our own answer, and then we can look at the very end of the video of how to bubble it into the bubble sheet for the sixth grade. Now, we have a clue word here that says we've got a rate here. So we've got a rate, so that's the relationship between 8 and 40. So we could write that several different ways, but only one of them is going to be super helpful for us. 8 bats, I'll put a little colon right there, to 40 grams. So that's our rate. So every 8 bats gets you 40 grams of insects in a night. You can also write it like this, 8 bats to... 40 grams. So that's something else I want you to see. You can write a ratio here with a colon or with a 2 or probably most helpful is we can set it up like this. 8 bats as a fraction. Now it obviously looks a little bit different. It's more vertical than horizontal but your first term is going to be your numerator and your second term is going to be your denominator. That's going to be most helpful because we're used to fractions and we know how fractions work. So how many grams of insects could 64 bats? Now, the reason I am so careful with labeling my numbers 8B and 40G is because we're going to need that to make this proportion here. So we're going to set this up as an equivalent fraction. And so we're going to have to make sure that our bats stay with our bats. So that's why our 64 comes up on top here. And then... The question is, how many grams? So that's our unknown, right? So our unknown, I'm going to put a box right here, is how many grams. And so when it says at this rate, that means we're setting up a proportionality. And so that means we are going to have equivalent fractions, and we know how to deal with equivalent fractions. So when we're dealing with equivalent fractions, we're either making our fraction look a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. We're going straight across, multiplying and dividing by fractions is straight across. So when we're multiplying, we're going to multiply straight across, and it needs to be something that is equal to 1. So 8 times what equals 64? That's really what we're looking for. That is a basic fact that we should have memorized, 8 times 8. So if 8 is our numerator that we're multiplying 8 bats by to get up to 64 bats, then we need to multiply the 40 grams by 8 as well. The reason why we always have to do that is because this is really just 1. 8 over 8 is really just 1. Anytime you multiply anything by 1, you get the same answer. So this new fraction over here is going to be the same. It's just going to look slightly different. That's the whole thing with equivalent fractions. So I just need to do 8 times 40. So 40 times 8. I'll do it the long way. Then I'll show you kind of a shortcut. 8 times 4 is 32. So it's 320. Another way to do that is realize there's a 0 there. So you realize you're going to have at least one zero in your answer. And then multiply the digits that are above 0. And that's going to be 32. 8 times 4. But either way, it looks like our answer is 320. Now, what's another way we could have done that? Well, we could have done it a little bit longer. If you really want to divide something, you could have done this. You could have done 8, 40, 64 over unknown, uh, over blank. We could have done a little bit of cross multiplication, right? So you could have done 40 times 64, figure that out, equals 8 times our unknown. And then what we'd have to do is we'd have to divide both sides by 8. So if you really wanted to, you can multiply 40 times 64, divide that by 8, and guess what you're going to get? 320. So how are we going to bubble this in here? Well, in our 6th grade, we've got two decimals, and then we have four whole numbers like this. So we really need to make sure we put our 320 in the correct spot. There is no decimals, so 0, 1s two tens, three hundreds, and you would just bubble in those numbers underneath. 